Hi kids, welcome to Dixie's Storytime World. When the Tooth Fairy Forgot. Chapter 1. Good morning, Eddie, says Eddie's teacher, Miss Stevens. Eddie sits on the carpet and says nothing. Good morning, Eddie, Miss Stevens says again. Miss Stevens is taking the register. She is calling out the names of all the boys and girls in Eddie's class. Lots of them have said, good morning, Miss Stevens, already. Now everyone is waiting for Eddie to do the same. He doesn't. Eddie, says Miss Stevens, glancing up from the register, is there a problem? Yes, but Eddie can't say so because of the wrong thing in his mouth. Luckily, his best friend Nadia guesses what's happened. Please, Miss, Nadia says, waving her hand in the air. I think Eddie's tooth has come out. Ah, I see, says Miss Stevens, passing him a tissue. Eddie was wiggling it when we were lining up in the playground, Nadia carries on. Thank you, Nadia, Miss Stevens smiles. Now, Eddie, just spit your tooth into the tissue and I'll take care of it until home time. You can put it under your pillow for the tooth fairy tonight. Oh, yes, I forgot about the tooth fairy, thinks Eddie, cheering up. Eddie was bending his tooth all the way forward and back. Nadia says, it was really gross. Nadia likes gross stuff. She likes examining snails. She doesn't mind changing her little brother's nappies. And last week, when Polly fell off the monkey bars and cut her knee, everyone fell sick except for Nadia. She just went, woo, at all the blood. Eddie thinks his best friend might grow up to be a vet or a doctor. Maybe she'll work in a hospital like the one his mom is going to have her baby in. Eddie's baby sister will be born in about two weeks, his dad says. That would be exciting. But not as exciting as Eddie showing mom and dad his missing tooth. Chapter 2. All day at school, Eddie has been practicing his surprise smile. He's going to smile at mom when she collects him, and she will gasp when she sees the gap where his tooth used to be. But there's a problem. Mom is not waiting in the playground. Neither is dad. Why is that weird girl waving at you? asked Nadia. The weird girl has pink spiky hair, a pierced eyebrow and a t-shirt with a skull on. It's my big cousin Bella, Eddie tells Nadia. Bella walks over to them. Hey Eddie, she says in a boomy voice. Hello, he says quietly. Eddie's unsure about Bella. At family get together, she's more interested in texting her teenage friends than talking to Eddie. So, guess what? says Bella. Nadia jumps in. Is Eddie's mum having her baby right now? She asks. She's very good at guessing stuff. Yes, says Bella, and Eddie's dad has asked me to babysit until they get back from the hospital. Eddie feels a wobble in his tummy. He wonders how long it takes to have a baby. He hopes his mum can be back home in time to make his tea. Chapter 3. Having a baby must take a long time. It's now quarter past bedtime, and Eddie's mum and dad still aren't back. Bella has been looking after him, but she isn't very good at it. She put on her headphones as soon as they got home. Mum and Eddie always have an after-school snuggle on the sofa and watch his favourite TV programme together. For tea, she made something in a gloopy sauce that smelt a bit burnt. Then Eddie had to tell Bella when it was his bedtime, and that she was meant to read him a story. Eddie doesn't like today. He didn't like having the tooth floating in his mouth this morning. He didn't like Miss Stevens sounding cross when he didn't answer his name at register. He didn't like spitting his tooth into a tissue. Ugh. He doesn't like Mom and Dad being at the hospital. He doesn't like Bella babysitting him. The only good thing about today is under his pillow. Tonight, when Eddie's dreaming, the tooth fairy will come. And in the morning, instead of a tiny white tooth, there'll be a shiny gold coin. Chapter 4. The next day in the playground, Nadia comes running up. Eddie, why are your eyes all red? She asks. She puts her arm around Eddie's shoulder. It feels so nice and friendly that he wants to cry. Again. Eddie thinks he frightened Bella this morning when he cried. Bella thought he must have hurt himself. But he was just really sad that there was nothing under his pillow except a stupid white tooth. The tooth fairy forgot to come, he mumbles to Nadia, poking his tongue into the gap in his teeth. Nadia stands straight up and slaps her hand across her mouth. 
Everyone in class is shocked too when Eddie tells them at circle time. Even Miss Stevens tuss 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 in a sorry for him sort of way. But Eddie is sure things will be better by home time because Mum and Dad will definitely be there. Then Eddie can ask them why the tooth fairy forgot. Chapter 5. When Eddie sees a flash of pink spiky hair in the playground, he knows that his babysitter has been completely unfair. She's taking far too long to arrive. Wait until we get home, Eddie, says Bella. I have something amazing to show you. Is it the new baby? asks Eddie. Nope, says Bella. Eddie feels a thrill in his tummy as he follows his big cousin home. Go look in your room, Eddie, says Bella as soon as they get through the front door. Eddie hurries to see what's happened. Oh, there is some kind of trail from the window to his bed. It's sparkly, silvery and fluttery. What is it? Eddie asks, bending over to get a closer look at a wiggly line of sequins and ever so small squares of tissue. Well, I'm no expert, shrugs Bella, but I think the twinkly stuff is fairy snot and that's got to be fairy-sized tissue. Eddie blinks. Is Bella saying the tooth fairy left this behind? Eddie, what's that? He looks where Bella's pointing and sees a tiny corner of paper peeking out from under his pillow. Lifting the pillow, Eddie finds a note not much bigger than a stamp with tiddly writing on it and a shiny pound coin. He grabs them both and scrunches his eyes to read what the note says. Dear Eddie, I'm sorry I couldn't come last night. I've had a really bad cold. Love, the Tooth Fairy. So, what do you think? Beams Bella. I think, I think it's pretty woo, says Eddie, copying his friend Nadia's favourite word. Then before he knows it, Eddie is giving Bella a big squeezy hug and she's giving him one back. Suddenly they realise that they really like each other. They're so surprised that neither of them hears the key in the lock. Hello, a happy voice calls out. Anybody want to meet a brand new person? Dad, with Mum and Eddie's new baby sister. He scrambles to his parents and there is a jumble of kisses and cuddles and chatting and surprise smiles. Oh my, where's your tooth gone, Eddie? Mum exclaims. Eddie finds out that he is big brother to someone called Freya. So, what's been going on with you, Eddie? Dad asks why Bella and Mum take turns twiddling the baby's toes. With a smile, Eddie takes Dad by the hand and leads him to his room. Look, says Eddie, pointing to the silvery snot trail and the two fairy sorry letter. Dad nods and looks, mmm, ah. But then Eddie decides to say something that will shock Dad. Can I tell you a secret? He whispers. Of course, Eddie, says Dad. It wasn't really the tooth fairy who did this. It was Bella. Dad's eyebrows ping right up to his hair. Really? How do you know that? He asks Eddie. I saw a silver sequin glued to Bella's cheek. Eddie tells him. I think she did all this to cheer me up because the real tooth fairy forgot. Hmm. Yes, that makes sense, Dad says laughing. He laughs so hard, he makes Eddie laugh too even though he's not really sure what's so funny. Chapter 6. The light is bright and the birds are tweeting outside Eddie's window. He is lying in his bed, feeling happier than happy, because Mom and Dad and baby Freya are back home and snoozing in the bedroom next door to his. And Eddie's very happy now that he has two best friends, Nadia at school and his big cousin Bella. Then Eddie thinks of something else and quickly slides his hand under the pillow. A coin! The real Tooth Fairy had come in the night just like he'd hoped she would. Eddie doesn't know why she forgot the night Bella was looking after him. Maybe she had a cold after all, or toothache, maybe, but it doesn't matter now. Thank you, he whispers to the Tooth Fairy. The end. <laughs>